In this video, I'll introduce the Excel interface, the terminology, setting up your first worksheet, and performing your first calculations. Ready to get started? We'll begin with a blank workbook. First, I'm going to zoom in the page a little so things are easier to read for those of you who are watching this video on their mobile device. At the bottom right of Excel, you'll see a slider with a minus and plus sign at either end. Let's bump it up to 150%. Okay, let's move around some of the key areas you'll need to know. At the top of the page, you'll see what are called tabs. And the area below each tab is called the ribbon. If we click on the tabs, we'll see that the ribbon changes. Each tab and its associated ribbon have related functionality. You may notice that some of the items in the ribbon have a little arrow icon at the bottom right. This allows you to gain access to more functionality. Let's click on the one near the number area. As you can see, there are other options for number formatting, alignment, and more. The Home tab has the most basic functionality, and that's where we'll spend all of our time in this video. Let's look at the main worksheet area. This is made up of columns, which are labeled A and onward. Uh, for the 2010 version of Excel, you can have over 16,000 columns. You may ask yourself, how can it have 16,000 columns when the alphabet only has 26 letters? After Z or Z, depending on where you live, the columns will be named with two letters. So the first column after Z or Z would be AA, then AB, AC, and so on. And the rows are labeled with numbers. You can have over 1 million rows. And each box on the worksheet is called a cell, and each one has a name. If we click here, this one would be called D5, which means column D and row 5. It's kind of like the old board game Battleship. You can also name groups of cells, and this is called a range. For example, if I highlight this group of cells, the name of the range would refer to the top left to the bottom right. In this case, this range would be called E4 to H10. Super easy stuff so far. The reason each cell has a name is that you will need the names of cells to perform tasks like calculations. Right below the ribbon, you'll see what looks like a browser address bar. In Excel, it's called the formula bar. Whenever you select a cell, you can see what's in that cell, and this can be text or formulas. So let's begin by building our first report. I'm going to create a report for a fictional used car dealership. Let's start with the first column heading. Inventory number. Now notice, if you click enter, the cell below it will highlight because Excel believes that you will fill in the next cell below it. Whenever you enter data into a cell and click enter, it will advance to the cell below it. However, if you want to enter information column by column, you can use tab or the right arrow after you add your information to the cell and want to move to the next one. You'll also notice that I started the title in B4 and it filled up C4. Actually, it didn't, because as you will see that if I click on C4, it shows nothing in the formula bar. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll also notice that I made a typo in the column heading. If you click on a cell and start typing, it'll replace whatever's in the cell. However, if you double-click the cell, you can see that I can now use the arrow keys or my mouse to move to the point to fix my error. Alternatively, you can select the cell and edit it in the formula bar. So let's do the next cell and call this Car Description. Notice how the inventory number is now chopped off. Don't worry, if you click on cell B4 and look in the formula bar, it's still all there. Next, we'll add a few more columns. Wholesale Price, Retail Price. You can probably notice that the columns aren't wide enough for the headings. And there's a couple of ways we can fix this. The first is to hover over the line between the column headings until you see the double-sided arrow. And then left-click and hold and drag to widen the column. Or you can highlight all the columns and find one of the lines between the cells. Once you see the double-sided arrow, double-click your mouse 
and it will automatically widen the columns to fit the contents. I'm going to widen the car description heading column a little more because I know the name of the cars will be wider than this. Now let's enter some data for this report. First I'll make up some inventory numbers. As you can see we have the inventory numbers increasing by one each row. Excel sees this too, so here's a trick to make data entry easier. If you highlight the two first inventory numbers by clicking on the first and hold the left mouse button and highlight the next one, see the little square at the bottom right? You can drag it down by holding the left mouse button and it will predict the next values. Pretty neat, huh? Excel is usually pretty good at this and can do it with other things like dates. Let me show you. I'll type in some month names then drag across and it enters the following months for you. Okay, let me get rid of the months. I'll highlight the cells and press delete. Now getting back to our report, let me speed things up while I type in the rest of the information for this report. Okay, let's start formatting this report so it looks a little more professional. We'll begin by centering the inventory numbers. To do this, we'll highlight the cells, then go up to the ribbon and click the Center Justification button. You can see that there's also the option to left or right justify the text. We'll do the same for the two columns of pricing. This time we can highlight both columns. Now let's turn these numbers into a format that actually looks like prices. We'll highlight the cells again by holding down the left mouse button while we select the other cells. And then we'll go to the number area in the ribbon and click the dollar sign. Alright, now this report is starting to look better already. Let's deal with the headings. We're going to center the headings by highlighting the headings and clicking the center alignment button in the ribbon. Now if you look to the left you can see a paint can. That's a fill color for the cell, so let's highlight the headings in blue. And we'll make the text white and bold. Oh, I've forgotten to give this report a title. If you want to center the title above your work, we can use Merge and Center. Start by clicking on the B cell, then drag to cell E so that the highlight area is as wide as the headings below. Then go up to the ribbon and click Merge and Center. This will merge the four columns into one for that row. And then we'll increase the font size, change the color to blue, and make it bold. So now we've got a basic worksheet. Let's add some information that would be more useful to the owner of Lemon Motors. First, they will want to know the profit they hope to make per car. So let's add a new column called Profit. I want to make sure it looks like the other headings and not have to redo the font color bold and cell fill again. So I'm going to copy the retail price heading and paste it right beside it. This is where you could use a keyboard shortcut Control plus C in the retail price heading to copy and then Control plus V to paste into the next column. Or you can simply highlight the cell and drag. Whatever option you choose, all you have to do is change the text from Retail Price to Profit. Now we're going to do our first simple formula. We'll begin by clicking on the first row under the Profit heading. Then we'll start with an equal sign, which means this cell will equal. This tells Excel that this will be a formula. We know that the Profit is the Retail Price minus the Wholesale Price. So the formula would be E5 minus D5. Notice as you define the cells, they highlight. Now click Enter and we have our first calculation completed. Now we want to repeat the formula for each row below. But don't worry, you don't have to do it again for every row. We can highlight the first row and then type Control plus C to copy and then highlight the remaining rows and type Control plus V to paste. You may have noticed that our title is no longer centered because we added an extra column for the profit. Let's fix that. So we'll highlight the cell the title is in and click Merge and Center. This will undo the Merge and Center so that you can do a new one that adds the extra column. So now you'll highlight the title in B2 and drag to F2. 
Now click the Merge and Center button, and now the title is centered over all the columns. So there you have it, you've created your first worksheet. This seems like a good point to end this video. In the next video, we'll learn how to apply more calculations to the data, as well as some more intermediate level tasks. If you find my videos informative or at least somewhat entertaining, please give this video a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing and clicking the notification icon to be notified when I release new videos. Thanks again and have an excellent day.